Hi, everyone. Hey, Sahas, how are you? Good, good, Dana. Good to be back again every yeah, first I, Monday of the month. Exactly. The first Monday of the month, we're all about mindset on the flip side. So like that, this is a show where me and Sahas get together the first Monday of every month. And we just talk about different, different topics, different areas of mindset. We both have a passion and understand how important, important it is. It is. Oh my God, I can't speak. And we just want to share our points of view to you and help you guys also form your own points of view. So today's quote of the day, for, we're going to be talking about ego. And the quote is, a bad day for your ego is a great day for your soul. So what do you have to say about that, Zaha? I think it is self-explanatory. The moment when you said that before, I just brought a big smile on because this is so true. And it's so hard at the same time, right? Like Very hard. Very hard. I mean, isn't this the life struggle of every human being to yeah. not let the ego come in? And most of the time it does and, you know, it spoils or it makes things a different way altogether. Or identifying it right yeah it's, i find i find my struggles is identifying when it's ego when it's intuition when it's actually my true authentic self speaking i feel like <laughs> all over the place you know i find that i find the, the ego really hard to to identify yeah. sometimes yeah absolutely and i think uh, it's a very good point about identification through your ego i I feel that uh, that you are not your ego. And uh, have you read that book by uh, Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now or A New Earth by any chance? No, I haven't read it. I only did the summary, so I don't fully know <laughs> okay. that one yet. <laughs> okay, so, a new earth, so A New Earth is a wonderful book and it's totally around ego and consciousness and Ekotole like really gives a great explanation around like you know how ego is a part of us and it is not something that you know you can get rid of because it is uh it we are born with it the moment when you are born as a as, as a child you are you know you are supposed to have an ego because it's my toy it's my this, it's my that. That is, the, that is the time when you develop that and it goes and goes and, you know, it becomes a part of you. But unfortunately, we start acknowledging it as a part of our identity. And we think our ego is our identity. This is what my personality is. Yeah. This is my voice speaking. Yeah. 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 It's very hard. And, yeah. um, and actually, it's very interesting. So there's a definition that psychologists give, and they say it's actually the mediator between your conscious and your subconscious. And I find that super interesting, because that's very true. Uh, in the sense that when you think about uh, your ego, for example, when you're speaking in fear, they say that's your ego when you're speaking in judgment, these things are your ego talking. And so it's very interesting because your subconscious will kind of, let's say, bring something in and then you're on it being like, no, 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 this isn't right. Or for example, if you do something wrong, um, your ego is like, no, 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 you did it perfectly and this is why. And you just logically will make sense or what you think is logical, you'll make yeah. sense of it and say that I was right and this is how it is and and um, so I found I found that also interesting that definition because uh, it's you know finding that balance the and balance, knowing, yeah. knowing what to listen to. Yeah, what to listen to? What is your inner voice? What is your uh, the real self? And I think it most of most of the time it is just you know lost in the whole noise of the ego because when it when it comes out, it's like really loud. You're unable to see the truth. You're unable to see objectively define something that whether this is a good thing or a bad thing, but the ego is something which is just going to, you know, create its own variation of that, uh, uh, whatever that uh, moment is. And it's going to present itself as if, you know, is it for, it's good for you or it is bad for you. 
mm-hmm. and it's very difficult to be objective at that point of time no matter what, how many people come in and say that you know this is a good thing or bad thing but you know it's an ego which is taken over exactly and especially like that they're talking about for example fear when you feel fear coming i didn't know that but they say that's actually your ego um coming in and for example like let's say a change is happening so obviously fear comes in because you never want to change is something inside that we don't want to change and we have to push ourselves for the change yeah. and mm-hmm. it's a uh, fear so when you feel fear it's actually that's your ego talking to obviously stop you from doing things mm. yeah ego doesn't have to be like good or bad like uh, ekotole like really clarifies that message that you know it's first of all it's not a bad thing to have an ego because that is it is what is really uh, Uh, you know a detrimental that when we start identifying with it but ego actually sometimes also saves you from a lot of things so like the moment when you think about it that whatever decision that you are making most of the time ego has a play in it ego doesn't always have to be like in the most negative sense possible but ego always has it like what i also feel is that you know the moment when we feel the most uh, about that presence of an ego around is that you know when there is a decision making thing that needs to happen in our uh, daily work if it is like you're working with your employees when you're working with your uh, family whenever there is an argument or something that is the very moment when you know it's very difficult to listen to objective situation uh, objective solution or thinking like i'm right or the solution is right Mm-hmm. so i think that is the real play but the th- good thing about like how do you play around ego is what i've also read and i'm i'm very very conscious about this ego thing in my mind also because me i personally feel that you know ego can either take you up it can also take you down so it's not that it can only only take you down it can also take you up but it can also but the way that you play with the ego is really really important so i'm very very conscious about intentional about whenever you know uh, which i wasn't earlier for a very very long time because i thought oh it boosts me it you know it helps me be the man that i am mm-hmm. or the be the person that i am be me but that's not true i'm just identifying myself with something which is not true but when that hits me at the moments of you know uh, you know heated arguments or anything the best way to get through that situation is just keep quiet just keep quiet yeah 100% because you're right your ego also in the positive sense your ego really gives you that confidence it actually helps to boost your confidence so in certain situations you need that confidence boost and your ego kind of pushes you like here let me help you you know to let make sure you. your confidence is there so you're ready to like get that meeting done 100% well or yeah. whatever so you're right it is it's and it's like a balancing act you're just learning yeah. to control slash having that awareness to you see it coming and is it a positive thing great you go for it and let it do its thing if it's getting too much or going too much into the negative mm-hmm. then it's being able to kind of hold it back and just allow it to like not allow yourself to be controlled by your ego too yeah so it's like yeah. that balancing act is i think everything in us right mindset it's all a balancing act you know figuring mm-hmm. out to be able to make sure that you try to remove the negative as much as you can and try to stay in the positive as much as you can right yeah absolutely and i think uh, again i somewhere i circle back to talking about meditation in some or the other way but i think for me uh, such things really really make me uh the person that i'm trying to be or by practicing certain things in my life it just makes you a little more calmer it's not like ego is something that you can ever get rid of it's very very difficult uh, unless you are you know going to attain uh, consciousness or some salvation or you know to if you're going to that those extremes and i don't know how many people in their lives are going to do that but the best way is just acknowledging that it is there it is a part of you and it also talks about like uh, like in the book also it also talks about that you know also trying to listening to your gut sometimes no, most of the time actually which we ignore and we think that this is not true or no no this is we just ignore it in the most high level conversations 
but if you try to listen to your gut you will always know that this was the right uh, right kind of a solution at the first place but just because your ego said something else and you said no i want to do that yeah that's another one i find very interesting yeah. is like that knowing when it's your gut uh when what is a gut feeling and then when is an ego yeah feeling like the ego trying to take control over that intuition that's also very fascinating because like that, like when your intuition is telling you one thing and you want to ignore it, mm -hmm. it starts using all its tactics, right? It'll start judging that it'll yeah. start fear, it'll start bringing fear inside you. It does whatever it can to tell you, no, 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 don't listen to that. What do you, you know, what are you talking about? Right? Like, listen to me. I know better. <laughs> yeah. See, the best way is that, I mean, I, I'm no guru we are not uh, you know uh, there at that position of our lives where uh, we know everything or i know everything about anything it's just that you know you have to start acknowledging these things in your life and uh, i've started doing that i'm starting to practice things around it which which makes me more in the moment and just today i was uh, just thinking about certain things that you know it's very easy to get get that ego the moment you know when you you go on social media, it's full of boosting your ego or either just pu pushing you down. Things can, and you are, when things are going right for you, you will be just looking for the comments. You will be just looking for, you know, those notifications which are popping out and all of these things. It's boosting your ego at that point of time. But the moment is that the, how do you play around it is that, you know, the moment when you give space between yourself and what ego really wants you to do, that space is actually going to help you to not really fight it, but acknowledge it because you cannot really fight it. I've, I've seen it because the moment you fight it, you start thinking that ego is your enemy. That is where it gets even more stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. You have to learn to work with it and yeah, and because you do have to change it, but like with that awareness and being like, it's okay, you know, I'm not going to take this road. Yeah, because I feel like in anything, if you try to even in meditation, if you try to like push that thought away and you're just like throw it out, what is it gonna do? It's come, gonna come back as quickly as it, as you try to throw it out, right? You have oh, yeah. to allow it to just allow come. It. Okay, yeah, you know, it you did what you needed. Like now I'm supposed to try to clear my mind and you kind of like gently, you know, <laughs> ease yeah. it out, right? You don't just be like, get out of there, boom, you know, <laughs> give it a slap yeah. in. Because it's just gonna be, oh yeah, I'm coming back at you, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and I think the best way is to uh, reciprocate things with empathy around uh, whenever there is uh, ego, whenever you think that, you know, uh, situations are going in control of uh, ego in your life or something that is not, that you don't want to get identified with. The best way is just be more humble, just be more empathetic around things. I mean, I, I feel that, you know, a lot of times what happens is that we, when we reach to a certain level in our profession, our life, you know, it somewhere swamps you and in, into uh, its own way. It gets you into its own cobwebs and says that, you know, now you're experienced, now you're an expert. So you need to be treated this, this way. You need to be treated that way. You, that is the ego speaking. But I don't think so that, uh, you know, somebody on that, when somebody who has reached that level has to talk with an ego, they can still be humble. They can still be having that empathy. Uh, or listen, right? Because a lot of things listen. that also happen is, is, oh, I'm an expert, so I know everything. And then yeah. you're missing out on things because as the world evolves, I don't. I think you can only be an expert for so long and things change and you're always having to learn something else. Yeah. So th that can be detrimental. Like I think, for example, a lot of businesses that fell in COVID probably had to do with ego lack of yeah. wanting to change both ego and lack of change right um just because you know that's you know, like that like either you don't have the awareness you think you, like your ego starts controlling letting you thinking that you know your ego knows better and you allowing it because not realizing right that yeah. that it's your ego talking you think it's your intuition oh no, no it's okay it'll, in a few months it'll be done we can suffer through we can you know get through those few months and and really, you don't realize it was your ego just not wanting you to change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's just giving a space between yourself and whatever the things that takes you, consumes you. 
just identifying yeah. it it's really important yeah exactly and just wanting to iterate something that you said that like that i think it's nice to hear people's comments and what they say because we're obviously giving our opinions on certain topics yeah. and we always want to hear yours because even you guys may change your mind because like you said we're all learning here and it's always great to have different points of opinion because yeah for example sahas will tell me something and my mentality was completely different and then it just rings true and then all of a sudden you're like you know what i need to change it or he says something and i'll be like you know what i that just confirmed my thoughts more and i actually yeah. feel my thoughts work better for my situation So it's just really nice because you get different people's point of view. So we want to hear your guys' point of view. I think this is one of the reasons. I think this is one of the reasons that we also listen to any podcast and we say, yeah, yeah, I think this is this person is saying exactly right what I also feel believe in. So I think it really helps us uh, when there is an in communication on both sides. So it gets a little, uh, you know, it's trying to listen to what is the other side of. Uh, other side is talking about so that we can also make sometimes sense of it so it would be great if uh, people would also like to comment on it and whatever they want to talk about what are their challenges with the ego first of all accept it it's there even if if somebody who says that he he or she doesn't have an ego it's complete bs <laughs> it's probably you're over consumed with your ego and don't realize it i'll be to the max right <laughs> your ego has just taken control over you <laughs> taken control over you yeah absolutely yeah i completely agree cuz like that the ego is something that and i would say like that to kind of start what would actually what advice would you give for someone to start becoming aware like how do you have any ideas of how you can become more aware Since- of when it's the ego is talking I think like it starts from a very very ground level also it starts from it's uh, it even starts from the level of that do you want to be a learner in your life like no matter even if sometimes what happens is that you know the ego doesn't let you grow in your life it doesn't let you be an expert also however you want to grow but you're not ready to take help from someone you know that you this is this is the uh, path which will get you the financial freedom this will be the path which will get you whatever the freedom whatever the your definition of freedom is but you are ego centric enough that you are not ready to ask for help mm-hmm. or ask I, questions i feel like ask asking questions. yourself questions especially yeah. after something happens and maybe you think it went completely wrong <laughs> and and i've had those situations where something goes wrong and i was like oh my god <laughs> and yeah, you're just and kind of like reanalyzing you're like what happened there you know that was not something that I should have done or not my normal self or or why did I get so upset about something you know it just like question I feel like questioning yourself which is I feel like something that I've been really into the la- like last year a lot I feel like hmm. was really questioning why that happened um and trying to understand my thoughts because i think once you start mm. doing that you also kind of start dividing that well that, that was the ego <laughs> that was the ego got to let that one go <laughs> yeah like i think even talking to you when when you were running a company when you were running it's it's very easy to fall into that traps of uh, oh so you're the boss and um, you're not ready to take any kind of uh, argument or any uh, new ideas from your team and it comes like very naturally and you will not even realize the thing with the ego is that you will not realize that it's already taken over you and that moment has already passed and unless you know you are very aware of these things or somebody points it out that you know what whatever you did in the last meeting it really hurt someone you will not even realize at that point of time so like but i just make myself very uh, i try to at least you know be very intentional and make myself aware of it like just in the morning i was talking to my team and i was just talking so i created one new youtube video uh, i restarted my youtube channel and i said okay so critique me tell me where did i do wrong and there was like it was like completely bashing you did this 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 everything wrong and i was like i'm glad that i'm doing it because it was just making me more uh, you know patient with myself that you know it's okay to hear feedback which is against you mm-hmm. 
and i called upon i called it upon myself i wanted to give that kind of a feedback because and i and i make sure that you know just be very candid be just be very honest about it like where did i do wrong what should i have done and i've told i, I think just one being vulnerable with the people around you also makes you go a little easy on the ego side of the things because the moment when you see that your vulnerability is actually opening doors connections and uh help helping your ego to fade away a little it can work out in a good way for you 100% i completely completely agree or sometimes even um having someone else that that you trust can help you communicate to others to get them because sometimes maybe you're overly dominant too and maybe you kind of like just uh you know like let it go and the relationship has been really broken having yeah. that other person to let cuz sometimes there's people that are super dominant and and the, yeah. the employees are scared and you're just like this person is going to probably let me go if i even give an opinion and it's probably not a real like he probably doesn't want a real opinion right yeah so i think even that helps um uh, sometimes sometimes yeah people give off like maybe you've been doing things the wrong way for a while and now you've realized the ways of your error and you're like okay let me you know figure out how to get this done and improve myself and then sometimes even someone from the outside helping you to ask those questions yeah. help if yeah if you've kind of like really broken that relationship or not broken it but even culturally i feel like yeah. culturally there's some cultures that they're very yes yes people or you're like amazing people like yeah you yeah, know you're doing you're doing everything right and sometimes i'm like no i'm actually asking for your opinion <laughs> you know like yeah. no no i feel i feel like those are also hard when uh, you're oh, when it's, it's culturally it's i think they see that gap they're like yeah. you're the boss and i'm an employee and you're right so i can't be right and oh. i feel like culturally i feel like i have i have those problems sometimes with people i mean again now i've kind of like you said with time you kind of massage them and you're just like guys i need an opinion i need at least give me one comment when like do yeah. what you know like i expect yeah. at least one one comment of improvement because i'm like guys if i'm not improving you guys may be out of a job you know <laughs> like, so that is that is why i'm using fear i'm employing you guys you know <laughs> so so that this is a good good strategy like uh it's like in by inducing fear you're asking them to critique me <laughs> you'll be out of your job if you don't critique me <laughs> well like uh, if i'm not changing i'm not evolving you know because yeah. uh yeah because i have a couple of people who are like that they just they i feel like i think it's a cultural thing like they don't want to give their opinion cuz i feel like they think you're the yeah. boss so just tell Absolutely. me what to do and I'm so not like that. Like I'm a very team player type of person. Like yeah. I like to be a team. I'm not really I'm a boss and you're down here type of yeah. person. Like I'm a let's get this going together. Let's work together as a team. Yeah. So I remember at the beginning I would it would be such a struggle because it would always be like, "Oh yeah, you're amazing. Oh, you're doing great." No, no, what you're doing is fine. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "That's not true. I know it's not true because I'm like I'm yeah. just starting out in this and obviously there's tons of things I need to work on because like, you know, like let's say last year mainly I was like there's so much i need to work on so i was just like yeah. i can't be amazing what are you talking about <laughs> but what i feel that why that gap is also there is because you know it's very hard to distinguish between that uh, a lot of people want respect but they didn't they forget that you know it is earned uh, over the period of time and that is why they create that kind of facade they create that kind of layers around them that it is very difficult for somebody to reach out through those layers and actually critique someone initially or something that is why it's very important for you to break down those layers and uh, just be open about it that you know uh, whatever that you i think vulnerability is the superpower the way if you are able to be vulnerable with your teammates even if your employees or even if the people i think that just le lets the guard down for anyone to just have a one on one real conversation with anyone i completely agree it's very yeah it's very true because like that like let's say last year um i could also say i was not also being vulnerable to be honest i was you know everyone had their work that they had to get done and we do let's say feedback 
but more on their work or their workloads. Never, it was never really about me. I never spoke yeah. about me a lot, especially at the very beginning. More at the end of the year, I was just like, okay, now it's time to work on me. But mainly I would say it was actually because I didn't want to be honest, like these videos, I would post them and never look at them again because I was, to be honest, embarrassed of myself and mm -hmm. what I was doing. Or And so I just went and I was just like, just let it go there. You know, I'll never look at it again. And then, you know, you get to a point where you're just like, okay, now I should probably start improving the way I speak, the way mm -hmm. I present. Right. And how am I going to do that if people aren't giving me a pit, if I don't get an opinion from someone? And then obviously, because they work on my material a lot, I was like, mm -hmm. what perfect to get my media team to tell me because, um, you know, they're, that's, they're an expert in that even too. Right. Yeah. And uh, so then it's, you know, starting to ask those questions and, and getting their opinions. And so I remember at the beginning, I was like, I don't even have the confidence to look at what I've done. Cause I, I'm actually, I read a book where it's like, you need to watch your videos and see yeah. your, your facial expressions, your hand gestures, mm. and you have to, your body language is very important. Yeah. And I was like, I can't look at myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very hard to critique, you know, because a lot of people have this kind of a thing. And I think uh, a majority of people actually, they, they don't like listening to their own voice. Mm. Whenever they listen, so they're like, oh, I hate myself listening to myself. So yeah. and that's why I think it, it's a very common, uh, uh, common thing, but it stems from that, you know, uh, that we are not confident about ourselves. We are self-judging ourselves too much, too much that uh, we are thinking that, uh, you know, we are not, uh, but, you know, you are learning, everybody's learning at their own pace. We can, the, the moment why that self-judgment comes into, because you start comparing yourself with a, some, you know, super bionic person. And, you know, you think that, why aren't you like that person? But it's your journey. It's my journey. We are going to learn at our own pace. And that's how everybody's going to roll out. Mm -hmm. And that's just like the ego going into play, but the ego going in the negative sense. In yeah. my situation, my ego is trying to like ignore it, bring in the fear of don't even look at it. You don't want to analyze yourself. You know? <laughs> like yeah, it's going to be yeah. a disaster to look at that. <laughs> how do I change everything on myself? You know? <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tough cookie. To, to be really honest, but uh, you just have to work around ego. It's no uh, fight against it. It's it's a part of our it's a part of our personality. It's a part the way that our, that we are born. It's st it's going to stick around with us till the end of our times. But uh, just hang out with, chill with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and also, you st I feel like you start when you're ready to start changing or working on your ego, that's when it will come anyway. So um, I don't think it's something that like that. It's not everyone will work on it, <laughs> but it's just yeah. something you get to a certain point of your changes. You're going through certain phases of your life. And, and then, for example, you start realizing, oh, you know, like that, like I feel like ego has been one of the things that I've been trying to work on. And it's just something like you get to a certain phase where it's just like, you know what? I need to start putting it in check or understanding it to make sure I can put it in check when I need to put it in check. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, uh, you really have to be intentional about these things because you never know. Otherwise, when are you going, getting off track? So that is why I think things like, you know, having gratitude, having empathy, this just gets you grounded, uh, makes you, makes you want to realize that, you know, uh, everything is happening for you not against you and whatever you have so like just today i posted something and i i told that you know that's that was in fact that is somewhere related to in uh, ego itself because i used to think that i was invincible and nothing can touch me and you know because or somebody if who uh, you know where there was some kind of an argument or something i just put myself into that kind of a shield that nobody can uh, cross that and it was just my uh, fight mechanism against certain things. But over the period of time, because uh, there, are, there could be health issues and I've been through that, I realized one thing that I'm not invincible. I can die anytime. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that possible. It, I just hope it doesn't happen now. <laughs> <laughs> just right now. Give it a few more years, you know? <laughs> Let me enjoy my life. <laughs> yeah. So it's... 
so just realizing the fact that you know in i cannot do anything about invincibility so like manifestations like having those motivations like you know just say yourself in in front of the mirror that you are invincible no it's not don't try to boost your ego with that that is not a positive frame of mind to have yeah or force it right because it's kind of like yeah. you're trying to force something if you don't believe yeah. it and you're forcing it good luck <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And even if you start believing it, but it could be a wrong belief to have because you all you're doing is that you are just boosting your own ego by saying that you are invincible, which is not any way true in your life. You're not. We're not made of. We don't. None of us wear Iron Man suit. We are just, uh, you know, very much prone to anything that can happen. It's just that understanding that you're not invincible, and that's okay. it's okay that the way because this is why this is what is the beauty about being a human being is so you don't have to be perfect in any way uh, possible yes there is a possibility that i have an ego in certain things in my life there is but just acknowledging that how do i lower those expectations down how do i try to put myself into somebody else's sh- shoes and not expecting them they to them to rise up there intellect or understanding but me coming to their level and understanding what are they trying what they can understand in their language so that we i am able to lift them above uh, together on the same page mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that and takes patience so, sorry what was the last part i said that that takes patience takes patience yes 100% and i'm actually curious cuz i think most children Oh, all feel invincible cuz i feel like when i was young i felt invincible i wonder if that's an ego thing or that's something else so i'm curious there's so many factors there's yeah. so many factors playing when you are a kid you know like going uh, if you're doing a if you're doing very good at school if your parents are super rich if you are uh, there's so many things which can help you out i mean to be really honest like when i was a kid my uh, i i i used to feel that i was invincible a little because i thought that i'm uh i come from a family which has family has money and everything so it was easy uh but there were other insecurities in your life because i was a, i i was really really uh, you know very fat so i was like 90 kg 15 year old boy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so there were other insecurities so at one side i where did i get my ego boosted because i had other things in life why mm-hmm. i could drive a fancy car i i could wear fancy clothes so all these things which helped me boost my ego just in order to balance where i was lacking in my life mm-hmm. then that is where i think a lot of things happen in you when you are a kid and you just try to balance those that act out in thinking that oh if you are not able to get the good grades in your school but you have something else which you are good at so why not just boost that up mm-hmm. i think just keeping I I think you cannot be. The thing is that you know the society just wants you to be good at everything, mm-hmm. everything. <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah, and that's very just, interesting. You say that that's true about the balance, and I mean it makes sense, right? Because like you said, you can't be good at everything. That's impossible. Because uh, for me, it was like that, especially in elementary school. I wasn't. I I can't. I, I don't really know. I wasn't good at school. I don't know if it was lack of interest or also cuz mm-hmm. I have a bit of dyslexia and it kind of like pushed me away from it but you're right my confidence was sports I was a very fast learner I could pick up because of the specific sports I did I guess they were kind of like a good base to other sports where if I did anything else I mm-hmm. would be amazing at it like for example I was a swimmer I was a very good swimmer and then we for example in school you do track and field never ran in my life and i was always, always the top runner you know and i'm just like Psh, i'm amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it was But, because especially as a kid you don't understand the difference yeah. right i didn't realize that it was actually swimming that was making me good at running so i actually when i was young i was like i'm just amazing at sports like that's who i am you know like i just yeah. i'm just so good at this yeah and it, i think it's very difficult for a kid to realize what is really good and what is a re- really great balance to have in terms of what is boosting their ego and what is boosting their confidence most of the time it happens that you know uh, what whatever boosts their ego is actually helping them boost their confidence may that be good at swimming may that be good at books whatever 
and somewhere you're trying to boost somebody's confidence in the form of ego so i think it could be good but i just just making somebody realize but actually the thing is that you know we have to be the society is built in that way that you know we have to be good at something just one thing and that that journey is lets us to just you know fall into the traps of ego sometimes because we just want to be great at something but the fact of the matter is not 7 billion people are good at everything or just even just one thing they're just living their life mm-hmm. we want our lives to be like very exotic and very uh, uh you know uh, in a very exciting way but most of the time i have a very boring life mm-hmm. and that's okay yeah. like it's not that i'm driving like uh, is social media crazy and you know driving fast cars or anything and that's the 90% of reality of what where we live in but the society with the social media just gets you over the head that you know you have to be doing this these these things because we look up uh pop stars we look up to uh, hollywood we look at those movies and we think oh their life is so exciting why aren't uh, we but look at their souls just look at what happened with will smith and uh, chris rock know, yeah. it was ego right there the right example like since this conversation is happening ego took over him just in the matter of seconds everything went down whatever oscar whatever his life accomplishments yeah exactly yeah it's very true and um even what you were saying about uh your confidence and you know the balance is just as i think it's actually very important for parents something that i've been thinking about because for example like what you said like i can't say i knew anything about awareness or anything like that because my parents never really taught it for me so like that like i can't like i didn't know why i was for example good at sports or why things happened to me the way they did um whereas like sometimes like even just i think you know if you teach it at a young age for example awareness and explaining obviously to them because as a little kid you can't know oh you this happens because of this or that um probably will help kids advance more in understanding yeah. themselves uh mm-hmm. because like that i feel like for me awareness is something that came probably after probably in university i would say i feel like university is mm-hmm. where i really started to learn myself and build that awareness in mm-hmm. who i am what do i like who is this person diana mm-hmm. you know all those questions mm-hmm. it's like i feel like it really started for me with the university yeah same with me like even when i went to the college and that's where i realized that you know because i i got detained <laughs> so one so i was like oh what just happened in my life it was so brutal at that point of time and i was like oh so so like shit can really hit the fan and it can uh, go things things can go south and that's where i realized oh there is a other things to life and i need to understand so many different variations of it mm-hmm. and that's where i started understanding about uh like that's where they say the right like when you you hit rock bottom and that's where you realize something so i hit that rock bottom endless times but that was one of those times where i did and i realized oh there is a lot to learn in this life there is a lot that i don't know about and i I've, i've been just uh, running around crazy thinking that i own the world which is not true yeah. <laughs> i completely agree for for me it wasn't really rock bottom but in university what it was it was like the bubble I yeah. I didn't realize I was in the bubble to say of like to say perfection I would say like mm. I had a very good life you know I can't say I ever had very many problems when I lived with my parents cuz I felt like I was very sheltered and very taken care of so when I went to university it was like pop and I was just like oh my god <laughs> what is this world that I'm coming into <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely so I think uh and like talking about our parents uh, i think whatever they knew the best that they did it but we are all, always the result of our, our parenting whatever we have been taught the way that we have been brought up good or bad doesn't really matter but at the end of the day it it, it really matters on the level of like how much awareness to your point like how much awareness do you have about certain things which you are going to learn at the level when you are at university why don't we start teaching these things when we are kids when we are in school when we are actually teaching kids about empathy having to be like what is more important to you uh, 
uh, earning this much amount of money or is it about being a nice human being? Mm -hmm. So having these kind of distinctions will actually somewhere down the line, maybe for you, for some person, having more money will not be even, uh, will not bring any, any kind of unhappiness, but helping someone would make, uh, give them more joy. But just having that clarity when they're kids, because a lot of times we are all brainwashed to be thinking that we need certain amount of job, this job, we need to be getting into that career, or we want to get into that college or that university, only then I will be called as a successful person. I think that needs to be broken out. Yeah, no, 100%. And um, like that, exactly what you said, parents do the best they can. And, and yeah. it's just, again, learning from them, because it's also you become a person of did I like that or do I want to be different to that? And yeah. again, it's just the awareness of like, is this what I would like to do? Did I like this approach? Did I, you know, yeah. like, like, again, just asking those questions to figure out, is this yeah. something I want to maintain and continue going forward? Or maybe I'm going to change it up for myself and let's say my family. Cause again, like that, like you saw how your family worked and you will pick out the good and the bad and decide, yeah. okay, this is how I want to, you know, let's say raise my family or do whatever it is that you want to do, or just your relationship, whatever it is, but you decide to pick how you want it to be by again, like reflecting and being aware of, you know, what you've learned from your past. Absolutely. Same goes with your, uh, your family. Have, like at the end of the day, what really matters is having that communication, having that conversation with your family. Maybe that be with your, uh, even at your work, maybe that be with your employees or your partners. However, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, what really matters is let's talk about it. Let's have a discussion about it. Let's open a conversation about it. And you'll be surprised so many things will be revealed in that conversation. So like my wife and I, we usually just have conversations about things like the about our lives about how we are doing what we are doing what's happening uh, just being conscious and aware of our own emotions mm -hmm. that uh, you know it really matters for i think it matters for us to be more grounded for uh, understanding human emotion in a better way because in during those conversations i am able to understand her in a better way that what kind of a person she is not as a as my wife, not as the person uh, who's uh, who I know, but as a human being, what are the choices that she's making in her life? Is it like, it's not good or bad. It's not about that. Uh, I'm going to say something that uh, should help her to make that decision, but it's just that communication is helping us to open a conversation. And maybe in that conversation, she's getting more clarity or I'm getting more clarity into that. So I think more the conversation, that's more the better. Yeah, openness, I think, is very important. And empathy, when you're there to actually listen and try to understand their point of view, um, like that, even back to the ego, it really helps your ego, too, because sometimes even your ego is, like, pushing something. And, and it's really, if you just go to empathy, listen to them, all of a sudden your ego kind of takes a back seat and says like, wow, you know, this is actually what it is. I thought it was this and this, yeah. and I was going with this narrative when really it's something completely different. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. So should we do, what tip do we have for the viewers before we end uh, this call? So what do you think? What's your one tip? Well, I think there are two things that we talked about, which I think they were really great. The gratitude and I think asking yourself questions. So if you want to improve uh, having more awareness and, or at least starting with the awareness, asking yeah. yourself questions and kind of reflecting on why you're doing what you're doing and why certain things happen, like what was the situation. I think that will be a good at least start to try to understand your ego and understand or yeah, understand when you're an ego and when you're out of it. And like you said, I think gra uh, gratitude, that's something I've also really started appreciating a lot more because when you're picking out those positive things in your life, you actually start really opening your eyes to more of the positive things that are yeah. there and you um, and you're, and the negative things really start minimizing a lot more because you, when you write them out, you're like, oh my God, all these really good things happen. And really one bad thing, for example, happened. 
And now it's just like, it's just one. I had so many other amazing things. So many happen, other things, yeah. Which again, it kind of helps with the openness and, and um, the empathy and trying to maybe like that, like when you need to help you kind of mm. remove that ego. What do you think? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, bang on point. Like even I feel that gratitude is the must. I think mm -hmm. that's the source for uh, for my, it gives me a lot of strength. I think just being humble and just being, just just acknowledging the fact that whatever, like if you think about it in this whole uh, consciousness of my existence, that I am enough. Just thinking that I am enough, everything else, whatever is happening is all extra. And that is happening for me. So like just being humble and grateful about the fact that everything that is happening is for me and I'm really grateful for it. Mm -hmm. And also like, you know, just opening yourself into those, uh, like you said, uh, opening yourself to those vulnerable conversations and getting the guard down because you, what happens is that we expect the other person to put the guard down, but it's not going to be possible until you put yourself. So the best way is that, you know, start creating that environment where it's okay to for you to make fun of yourself mm -hmm. so that that will help you to just listen that is for comedians why did why do they always start uh, when they joke about other people they also joke about themselves mm -hmm. because they want to make guard down they want to make sure that people don't feel that oh this guy has an ego he's just talking about us but he's never talking about him that is why they're like they they play very well with the egos because they're always like yeah they joke about themselves first then they'll talk about so I think just opening to those conversations where you are able to put your own guard down be open to criticism because that is a really good step for you to work around your ego because it's not easy to take any criticism but when you start taking small small steps towards it you are actually learning to embrace it. And that is really important to uh, just play around and dance around with your ego. 100%. Thank you so much, Lahas. It's always awesome to talk with you. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Like I said before, tell us what you think about what we've said. You know, give us your opinions. We'd love to hear it so that we also love learning from you guys, too. Thank you, Absolutely. Saha. Thank you, everyone. Thank we'll you. see everyone in the next episode. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.